Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at the next part of the pharynx that is the trachea or which is often known as the windpipe. Like how esophagus is called the food pipe, similarly trachea is termed as the windpipe because it carries the air. So air passes from pharynx into this pipe. So this is this was the pharynx. This portion was pharynx. From pharynx it passes through the uh, trachea. So this structure which you see is trachea. So it extends up to the mid thoracic cavity. So what is this thoracic cavity? Now our body, the entire body as such is divided into three parts. The upper portion is known as the head. The next portion, this one, is known as the thorax and then the next lower portion is known as the abdomen. So this entire cavity is called the thoracic cavity, the cavity which contains the thorax. That is the thoracic cavity and this entire cavity is known as the abdominal cavity. So when we talk about the trachea, trachea extends up to the mid thoracic cavity. That means up to the middle of this thoracic cavity. So it extends till there. After that what happens that is why you see here it starts from here and it extends only till here. But the thoracic cavity extends up to this part. But the trachea extends only up to half of the thoracic cavity. After that it enters inside the lungs where it gets divided into bronchi and bronchioles. So we will talk about that also very soon. Now C-shaped rings of cartilage are present. Now in order to provide support to the trachea, you see, you look at, you, you can see some structures like this. So what are these? These are nothing but rings of cartilage. So these cartilage helps in preventing the trachea to collapse even if there is no air. So it should not be like uh, an elastic structure that when air is there, it is fine. But if there is no air, it will be like, uh, it will get... Uh, collapsed that should not happen so if you don't want if we don't want that to happen there has to be some strong base on which the the trachea should remain stout and as it is even if there is no air so for that purpose there are cartilaginous rings because cartilage is quite strong so when you have rings of cartilage to support it so in that case it doesn't matter whether air is present inside or not but the um, trachea will remain as it is it is internally lined by cilia and mucus again because cilia and mucus help to block the dust particles and it also help to prevent uh, the respiratory organs from infection of microorganisms or germs. Right? So that is why. That, so now you see one thing that the entire, the, all of the respiratory system has lining of cilia and mucus so that you can actually get rid of as much as dust particles as possible so that the air which reaches your lungs finally should be very clean and neat without any impurity. So this trachea runs from the throat till the thoracic cavity. Now as I said, how do you know where is the end of the thoracic cavity? This diaphragm. Now, I'll tell you what is diaphragm. So, here you see a line, a dome-shaped structure. So, this denotes the end of thoracic cavity. And after the thoracic cavity starts the abdominal cavity. And that is the cavity where you have most of your digestive organs like the stomach, the intestine, small intestine, liver, pancreas. All those things are present in the abdominal cavity. So thoracic cavity is filled with your lungs, some part, portion of the trachea. So that is all about trachea. The next important part that is the lungs. The most important or the uh, key organ of the respiratory system. So they are spongy elastic organs. Now they are elastic in nature because they have this need of expansion and contraction. That's because when we breathe in, so let us suppose you are taking in air. That means you have some extra volume of air to be accommodated. So that has to be accommodated somewhere within the lungs. So the lungs should possess some elasticity. Similarly, when you are breathing out air, so you are removing out a lot of extra air from your lungs. So that expansion and contraction should be there in your lungs. 
So the lungs are also located in the thoracic cavity as you can see here. They, these are the two lungs, the right and the left lung and they are located in the thoracic cavity. So there are two lungs, right and left. The right lung has three lobes whereas the left lung has two lobes. So this is the right lung and this is the left lung. So this lung is actually divided into three lobes like this. This is one, this is two and this is three. So one, two and three. These are the three lobes into which the right lung is divided. Similarly, the left lung is divided into two lobes like this. This is one and this is two. Now here you can see that near the left lung there is a little notch like this. Now this is the place where the heart is located. So the heart is located somewhere here in this space which is made by the left lung. So that is the position of the heart. Okay. So this is about the lobes which are present in the lungs. Now the lung is enclosed by a two layered membrane which is called pleura. So here if you see there is a two layer membrane. This is the outer layer and this is the inner layer. So this is outer layer and this is inner layer. Now why are there two layers? Because as I said these lungs are spongy organs quite soft and elastic so they, needs to be, they need to be well protected. So in order to keep them protected we have a double layer structure. Now in between these two layers a fluid like substance is present which actually keeps it all the more protected. So it plays a very important role in breathing and oxygen absorption. So the lung plays the key role in breathing and also in oxygen absorption. Now how it plays an important role that we will see when we talk about the structures which are present inside the lung like the bronchi, bronchioles and the alveoli. Now if you look at the location of the lung, the lower portion of the lungs rests on this structure called diaphragm which is a muscular structure. We will talk about diaphragm also separately. Now this cavity which is known as the pleural cavity, the between the two layers as I said that space is known as pleural cavity and this pleural cavity contains a fluid which is used to pro provide lubrication and also to prevent friction. So that means, the, as I said, when we breathe in, the extra air is accommodated inside the lung and that happens because of its elasticity. So it plays a very important role in breathing and oxygen absorption. So now when we look at the different lobes, the lobe which is present on the above side that is known as the superior lobe and the lobe which is present below is called the inferior lobe. Similarly in the right lung, this is the superior lobe, this is the inferior lobe and this is the middle lobe. So the three lobes in the right lung are superior, middle and inferior. And the two lobes in the left lung are superior and inferior. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.